My name's Colin Furs, and for a job, I make crazy shit. What sort of crazy shit do I make? Well, I'm sitting on one of the things, the uh, world's fastest mobility scooter. I've made a jet bike, I've got a jet powered barbecue, jet powered kettle, I've got a pram that's got an engine in it that does 50 mile an hour. You name it, if it's completely stupid, ridiculous, and probably not worth spending time on building, I've built it. I've always, you know, kind of wanted to add something to things to try and make it a little bit more unique and a, and a bit more sort of gadgety, I suppose. The projects have just kind of gone, you know, took off a little bit more. Everything's a bit more bigger, a bit louder, a bit faster, just a bit more mental, really. When I, when I started, I, I didn't have a lot of money to play with, so I couldn't just go buying cars willy-nilly and modding them, tuning them up. So it was kind of like, you know, what have we got now? What can we make of what we can get hold of easily and, and cheap? But there is something more appealing about making something out of a trolley with something that's not as good as a Ferrari engine and still making it look just as awesome and going just as fast. If you can do it with basic tools, basic equipment, then it's a lot more fun and I think there's a bit more of an achievement at the end of it as well. I think the internet now, because like, you know, with all the how-to videos and stuff like that, I mean, that's how I learnt to aluminium weld, is, uh, is going on YouTube looking at alley welding videos, some of them which are ridiculously boring, but there's always like a little nugget of information in them that, that you need. So I'd like to think that I bring a little bit of interestingness to, to, to sometimes quite dull subjects. But the worst thing I've ever done is in this very position actually, I was trying to start my jet engine up, which I'd made out of a toilet roll holder. And uh, in between me putting it together, ready for the test, I'd gone in for my tea, come back out again, and I hadn't actually tightened the gas bottle nut up. So I was sitting here trying to light it, just like leaking gas all onto the worktop. And, uh, and then as, as you do when you, you, you start on these things, you get like spits of flame and the thing, and the whole flock just went up. And it, I mean, it took all the skin, this arm completely lost all my skin. And you can't really tell. When I get cold, it goes a different color all around here, but it, Generally, it doesn't look like anything's happened to me. So I got pretty lucky there. The, the idea for the world's fastest mobility scooter, it, it kind of comes around how most of the ideas come around. Sometimes it's not, what should we do? It's what have we got to do stuff with? And somebody had given me a mobility scooter about two or three months prior to this just to fiddle about with because the thing is I find them the more the more sort of popular your videos or you get the more people want to help you so I've been into like this uh, mobility scooter shop he also does like TV repairs and things like that because me stereo amplifier thing had all packed up so I took it into him and I was like looking around I go oh do you get any you know have you ever got any ones that you chuck away and he's like yeah yeah sometimes you know people bring them in we don't want them and I was like oh you know you know a couple of weeks later he brings one round so I've got this little free wheel mobility scooter that's like coffee stain, you know what I mean? So if you think of something really old, like beige and, 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 and dank, that's what it was. But it was great fun because we were just sat on it, burning around the uh, garden. And then it comes, uh, it started to get nearer to October, the, the date and month, which I always do my uh, records. And I hadn't really thought of anything that I wanted to do that year. And I was just, just looking at it thinking, how fast has anybody ever made one of those go? And at the time there was no record for it. So I had to start a new category up with Guinness. You basically apply, tell them what you want to do. They send you back a, a load of guidelines and like a target speed because they obviously look at it and think, well, it's not going to be very impressive unless it goes as fast as this. So they come back with 60 mile an hour, which is interesting because my I had in my head about 50. I thought 50 would be pretty good for a mobility scooter. So they come back with 60. I thought, oh, that's, that's interesting then. And obviously we ended up doing 70. When, when you start off with them, they've got like two batteries, two 12 volt batteries, 24 volt motor. Um, the challenge with it is just to get an engine to fit in the gap that they take up. If you sit it in a row of mobility scooters, you would not go, that one's special. It just looks completely stealth. And then you start it up and bang! Uh, currently, Guinness World Records have got five. Got the world's biggest bonfire, world's longest motorbike, world's fastest mobility scooter, fastest pram, and fastest toilet. I'd like, I'd like to get to get lots of them, 
but it won't be me having a snooker cue balanced on my nose for like 10 days. I'm not interested in that. It's, uh, no, it's boring. <laughs> The fastest speed I've ever had out of it is 82, and that was on a, a longer runway because you have to have it timed properly, obviously, for them to verify it. Then the only places that I can find with the proper timing equipment that's already there that I don't have to hire out is, is like drag strips like Santa Bob and uh, Shakespeare. So I took it on that and just pinned it, just left it sat there in like top gear, gradually climbing, and I clocked 82 on that day. And then I literally, as I was slowing down, the rear tire just completely let go, and I was like, <laughs> Shit, <laughs> I was close. I think I did the quarter mile in about, I think it was 18 seconds at 60, about 68 mile an hour was the first one. It out rips most normal cars if you were in like a little one litre or like a bog standard Fiesta, it normally out -out -out accelerates them. Because like when people come to film like yourself, and I'm at the side, you know what I mean, it's easy for me to just nail it and go, and then they, they, their car's struggling to, to then creep back up with me. So they're, they're quite good, they're quite, they're quite pokey. It's weird, you, you'll probably have the similar thing, right? When you're talking, cars to people that like cars it's easier isn't it you face these people that don't really know anything about you don't really know anything about what you do uh, people don't understand it they don't realize it's kind of like a job and and then you try and explain things oh I've got a mobility scooter and I've made it do like 70 80 mile an hour or you know put this big jet on a bike some people just don't get it it's just they don't really under, I just sometimes think they're just going right right but and in their minds they've, they've just, the mental picture is not matching what reality is yeah, but when you're talking to people that understand it and make stuff themselves, then you, you can just talk to them for hours. And you get so many people go, oh, I wish I could do that, or, you know, I'd like to do that. But, you know, but you can. You can do it. The only thing that stops people doing it is what they think is socially acceptable. And that's all you've got to do is just forget what everybody's going to think of it and just, just, just do it.